Deadly mushrooms are of concern to a lot of people, and for good reason. Some mushrooms out there can definitely kill you. So on this video, we're gonna look at deadly mushrooms that you should be aware of. So come with me on this episode of Mushroom Wonderland to discover the deadly mushrooms that you might encounter. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. Deadly mushrooms are a thing, but I'm just gonna start by saying that they're not as common as people think. Most of the mushrooms that people say are toxic are just gonna cause you GI distress, but there are a handful of mushrooms that could kill you. In Western society, we have been bred to have a bit of mycophobia, and that is a fear of mushrooms. I wanna dispel a couple of myths really quick. It's okay to touch any mushroom. You cannot absorb poison through your skin from mushrooms. In fact, most mushrooms, you can even nibble and spit out the material, as long as you don't ingest it and get it into your bloodstream, it's not gonna hurt you. So we're gonna get right into it. The first deadly mushroom that I'm gonna talk about is called the deadly web cap or Cortinarius rubellus. Mushrooms in the genus Cortinarius are pretty obvious to spot because they have what's called a cortinal veil and that is a cobwebby like attachment between the cap and the stem. The deadly web cap is not one that typically pops up in lawns or in urban settings. This is more of a forest mushroom, so maybe more of a concern to mushroom foragers who are out to gather mushrooms for the dinner table. This mushroom grows in association with trees. There's very few mushrooms in the genus Cortinarius that people forage for food, so it's not really a mushroom that a lot of people have died from, but there definitely are accounts of people dying from the deadly web cap. This mushroom is fairly medium sized and and brown and this one grows about three to four inches tall and the cap is usually about two to three inches across. You could pinch the cap off of the stem and put it down on a piece of paper and it's gonna reveal a rusty orange brown spore print. This mushroom is never slimy. The top of the cap actually has like a little bit of fuzz. Also on the stem of this mushroom, it has a pattern that can look kind of snake-like. The deadly web cap contains something called orolanine that attacks your kidneys. Not a lot of people have died from eating this mushroom, but it's not a good way to go. Just burn these images into your head, look it up for yourself, and if you find any mushrooms out in the woods and you're into gathering wild mushrooms, perhaps mushrooms that you're unfamiliar with for the dinner table, make sure that it's not a Cortinarius and especially not Cortinarius rubellus. The deadly web cap or Cortinarius rubellus makes it onto our list of deadly mushrooms. Another deadly mushroom that likes to associate with trees and often grows on the edges of meadows or lawns perhaps and definitely out in the woods is the Gyra mitra esculenta. This one's known as the false morel. It typically comes out in spring and this mushroom looks a little bit like a brain, usually a dark maroon colored cap with gray to fleshy colored stem. This mushroom has all sorts of wrinkles and does not take on the shape of a typical cap and stem mushroom. It's commonly called the false morel, and this one is a close relative, and it actually looks a bit like a morel. It grows in similar environments, and it contains something called monomethylhydrazine, and this is a chemical that when you ingest it will turn into a certain type of rocket fuel and has been known to be deadly. There have been several counts of people dying in Europe from Gyromitra esculenta, but never a case of death in America has been recorded from this mushroom. Here in the Pacific Northwest, they like to associate with conifer trees, so if your lawn backs up to the edge of a forest, you'll often find these growing kind of along the edge of the forest. So be aware of the false morel or the Gyromitra esculenta. This is a common mushroom that grows widespread all across the Northern Hemisphere and is known to be deadly. Another mushroom that you might encounter in the woodlands or right in urban settings that likes to grow on dead wood is known as the funeral bell or the Gallerina marginata. This is probably the most common deadly mushroom in the Pacific Northwest, and it does grow all across the Northern Hemisphere. This is a small brown mushroom that likes to grow in clusters on wood and contains amatoxins like the deadly amanitas that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. The real danger for this mushroom is magic mushroom hunters, people who are looking for hallucinogenic mushrooms sometimes come across Gallerina marginata and mistake it for a hallucinogenic mushroom, and that can get you into a lot of trouble. 
Amatoxins, like the ones contained in Gallerina marginata, are known to attack the liver and the kidney, which is a really bad way to go. If you were to accidentally ingest some of these and not get medical attention right away, you would start to experience some really bad gastrointestinal distress, perhaps vomiting and diarrhea, really bad stomach cramps, and then things would start to feel better. You would think you were out of the woods, and that's when it really attacks the liver. Your liver stops creating proteins, and it is a slow and agonizing way to die. So Gallerina marginata can also grow in wood chips, and that is where you would find magic mushrooms a lot of the time. But if you have little kids and piles of dead wood in your lawn, kind of like the one behind me, Gallerina marginata can definitely be growing there. So be aware of these little brown mushrooms that grow on wood. This is probably the most dangerous mushroom here in the Pacific Northwest because it is so widespread and common. So keep an eye out for Gallerina marginata. This could potentially be a mushroom that could cause you trouble. One mushroom that is an urban loving mushroom and can be found in lawns and grassy fields like this that could potentially be a danger is known as Foliotina rugosa. This is a really small small brown to orangish colored mushroom that grows in lawns. This one is also gonna have this kind of rusty orange colored spore print. One of the main indicators of Foliotina or Conosobi is gonna be a little ring on the stem. If you suspect that you have these mushrooms in your lawn and you're wondering what you can do about them, there's not a lot you can do about the mycelium underground. You could pick these fruiting bodies and it's not gonna hurt you to pick them and just throw them in the trash. This mushroom could potentially be confused for one of the hallucinogenic mushrooms. This is one you should definitely be aware of, the Foliotina rugosa, a little tiny lawn mushroom that could cause big trouble. A mushroom that is a potential danger to mushroom foragers is known as Amanita smithiana. And this is a type of mushroom that sometimes gets confused for the matsutake, a really popular foraged edible mushroom. And Amanita smithiana is a large white mushroom with a lot of tattered veil remnants and small scaly bits that are kind of dangling off of it. This makes this mushroom pretty distinct, but it could potentially be confused for a matsutake when it's young. One of the things that really indicate this is an Amanita and not a matsutake is gonna be this really bulbous base. This mushroom also can smell a little bit like bleach. This mushroom has an unknown toxin, but has been known to kill people. Amanita smithiana, a really uncommon one to find growing in your lawn, but it's a real potential danger for commercial mushroom harvesters or matsutake hunters or even the amateur enthusiast who likes to go out and pick wild mushrooms for food. Eating this mushroom would be a pretty bad way to die. So now that I'm talking about Amanitas, this is a genus of mushroom that contains some of the most deadly mushrooms in the world. And there's a group of mushrooms known as destroying angels. And there are several, at least seven different species that fall under this common name of destroying angel. These are white mushrooms that associate with trees and can be found on the edges of meadows or deeper into the forest, never out in the middle of a big grassy field. Some of the main indicators of the destroying angel group are a medium to large size mushroom that has a annulus or a skirt that's hanging down on the stem. And at the bottom of the stem, you're gonna find what is called a vulva. And this is a sac that the mushroom is growing out of. It looks a lot like an egg or an eggshell that the mushroom burst out of. This is why excavating mushrooms all the way from the base when you're identifying a new mushroom is crucial. I know it seems counterintuitive. A lot of people think that you need to cut all mushrooms to preserve the patch. That is complete nonsense and I cover all that in a different video. And if you're gonna identify a new mushroom for the dinner table, you have to excavate the entire base and this group of mushrooms is exactly why. If it has this vulva or egg-like structure on the bottom and it's a medium to large size white mushroom with white gills and one of these skirts, you can almost be sure that it's in the destroying angel group. And this contains amatoxins that are essentially gonna liquefy your liver and cause you a very uncomfortable death or at least a really expensive liver transplant. So look for these indicators, a medium to large size mushroom, white gills, it's gonna have that dangly white skirt on the stem, and then that egg-like vulva at the bottom of the stem. If it has all of those features, definitely avoid this mushroom. It's probably in the group of destroying angels, which is a really uncomfortable way to die. And the last mushroom I'm gonna talk about on this video is probably responsible for the most mushroom deaths ever recorded in the world. And this one is known as Amanita phylloides or the death cap. And it has all of the same 
features as the destroying angel. It's gonna have the white gills, it's gonna have that skirt-like partial veil hanging off the stem, and it's gonna be coming out of this egg-like sac called the vulva. This mushroom is a dirty greenish color, but it can get really pale and almost white as it matures. 95% of mushroom deaths are attributed to this mushroom, and it doesn't have a bad smell, and it doesn't taste bad. In fact, the people who have survived eating it will often tell you that it was one of the tastiest mushrooms they've ever eaten. This mushroom is mycorrhizal, so it grows with trees, but it is known to grow in urban settings. There really is no way to eradicate a patch of death caps from your lawn, but you can pick the fruiting bodies and throw them into your compost or into your garbage. If you have toddlers that are bumbling around in the backyard or puppies that like to get things in their mouth, keep an eye out for these dirty greenish colored mushrooms, especially with that vulva sac on the bottom. One large cap would be enough to kill an adult human being and cooking will not render this mushroom safe. It has heat liable toxins, which means you cannot cook the poisons out of this mushroom. So this group of Ammonitas, the Destroying Angels, and the Death Caps are the most deadly mushrooms in the world. So I hope that if you have concerns, you'll look a little bit deeper into these species. All of this being said, most mushrooms are safe. Most of them are non-toxic. My channel really aims to demystify a lot about mushrooms and take away some of the fear, but, but this topic is really relevant as we're going into mushroom season. So become familiar with your deadly mushrooms. Go to mushroomwonderland.com to get some merch or help support me over there. Go to olympiccollege.edu to check out some of my mycology classes and make sure to hit subscribe. We'll see you on the next episode. Much love everyone. Be safe out there.